When I was a child, I played a lot of video games. And yesterday, I had hamburger for lunch. Well, I didn't have hamburger for lunch, but I wanted to. And how would you express those two situations in the past in Portuguese? One of them is a maybe continued action in the past because I didn't play only one video game, and the other would be a specific action that has a clear beginning and a clear end in the past, although I really wanted to eat hamburger. Oi, eu sou o Eli e sou aqui do portuguesewithali.com. Hoje temos uma aula de português, um pouco em inglês, um pouco em português, mais avançado. Agora, vamos começar! And if you're watching this video, please subscribe. It helps me so much. If you're already subscribed, Thank you very much. You can like the video if you think it's useful. And if you have any questions, leave a comment for me in the comment section. Now, let's get started. Well, when we talk about past, present, future, we have to imagine a timeline like this. And then we have the present, which is a specific point in time. It's still happening. And when baby John was born, um, it was a specific point in time. In the past, this action already ended because You can be born only once, and it is usually very quick. Not, I, I don't think it's very uh, slow, but in some cases it is. When, <laughs> then a little bit um, further in the past, we have a marriage. I got married in the past. Well, a marriage is a specific event that has a clear beginning and a clear end, and you can't really marry twice. You can, of course, but Even to the same person, but it doesn't last. I, no, no. <laughs> I mean, the wedding ceremony has a specific time to finish. Uh, I hope the marriage doesn't. And I have also to remember that all the while those things were happening, other things were happening simultaneously. Like, I was working until baby John was born. Um, I was working from Monday to Friday, uh, to Sunday actually, and here in the timeline. And... I was working while I was doing other things. So we have two kinds of past here, right? One for specific actions and other for uh, maybe continuous, maybe not clear, um, with a clear ending and a clear beginning in the past. And that's what we're going to take a look right now. First, the simple past tense in Portuguese. Let's call it like that because pretérito perfeito, sometimes it's not very clear why it's pretérito perfeito. If you want to have some more details, of course, you can always refer to the supporting article in the description below. But here, we're going to skip that part. Okay, so the simple past tense is used when you want to talk about simple actions that have a clear beginning and a clear end in the past, even if it's not clearly stated. For example, eu comi bolo de chocolate no final de semana. Eu comi bolo de chocolate no final de semana. Já escrevi cinco livros. Estou escrevendo o sexto. Já escrevi cinco livros. Estou escrevendo o sexto. Mas eu não fui caminhar a semana passada. Estive muito doente esses dias. Mas eu não fui caminhar a semana passada. Estive muito doente esses dias. And to me, and to Portuguese speakers, those actions have a clear beginning and a clear end, even when it's not stated. For example, já escrevi cinco livros. Okay, when? I don't know, but I finished those five books, so eu escrevi todos eles. I can't really write the same book again. Some people say that some writers do, but <laughs> that's not actually possible. So, it's very clear. It's a specific action in the past, and it's clear from context, or it even is explicit that there is a beginning and an end to this action. I think that the most confusing part comes now because we are talking about the imperfect past tense. In this case then, for example, the first instance you would use the imperfect past tense is when you want to talk about routine, something that happens routinely in the past. For example, Sempre fechava a porta depois de entrar na sala de aula. Alguns alunos não faziam isso. And you can see that this is routine, this is repetitive, because this person did it whenever um, he or she went into the classroom. 
Comprava doces na loja dele sempre que podia. Comprava doces na loja dele sempre que podia. And here again, it's repetitive, it's a routine, because whenever I went to that shop, I would buy candy. Hmm? Então, comprava doces na loja dele sempre que podia. Another concept that's actually very, very close to it is that of habits, because habits and routine, they kind of have the same nature, right? But I decided to separate them because the point here might be a little bit confusing. In English, you usually say, oh, I would wake up at six in the morning and I would go jogging. You would say, I, you would use this would part. In Portuguese, whenever you do that, you are talking about habits, then you need the imperfect past tense. Todos os dias, eu me levantava às quatro e meia da manhã e saía para correr um pouco. Todos os dias, eu me levantava às quatro e meia da manhã e saía para correr um pouco. And here you see, that was a habit, that's something that the person did uh, habitually. So, levantava e saía. Quando era criança, jogava futebol todos os dias. Quando era criança, jogava futebol todos os dias. And I want to draw your attention to era. It's very, very common that my friends, my English-speaking friends say, quando fui criança, but... Hmm, you, you, you were a child, but for a very long time, <laughs> let's hope, and that although that has a kind of a specific point to end, it lasted for, in our imagination, it lasted for a long, long time, and we don't really have a beginning and an end for, for that action, because it's not an action, it's a state. And we will see why this is not quando fui criança. In a moment, I will tell you when. Next is, eu digitava mais rápido quando jovem. Eu digitava mais rápido quando jovem. Another situation where you have to use um, the imperfect tense is when, take a look here, so many people doing so many things at the same time. This person is walking, that one is talking, and while they are doing this, the cars are going by. Again, in this case, you need the imperfect past tense to talk about simultaneous actions happening in the past. A mãe cozinhava o feijão enquanto as crianças brincavam na sala. A mãe cozinhava o feijão enquanto as crianças brincavam na sala. O cachorro latia, o gato miava e as crianças gritavam. Era uma barulheira só. O cachorro latia, o gato miava e as crianças gritavam. Era uma barulheira só. Of course, you could mix imperfect and perfect or imperfect and simple past tense. And would you could say, eu fiz isso enquanto ela fazia aquilo. Uh, it's also possible, but you also could say everything using the uh, imperfect past tense. And lastly, take a look. Oh, she's looking at some pictures, probably she's saying, oh, I used to do that, but I don't do it now because of the pandemic, so I have no chance to do it. I'm comparing the past and the present. See, I'm very smart. And because she's doing that comparison, present, past, and usually to say that it's different from that, we use the past tense as well, the imperfect past tense. Quando eu era criança, gostava de jogar bola. Hoje em dia, não tenho tempo nem disposição para isso. And here you see, quando eu era criança, gostava de jogar bola, but I'm not a kid anymore. So, comparing to the present, I'm not a child, so I use the imperfect past tense. Quando eu era criança, gostava de jogar bola. Next, antes, chovia quase todos os dias. Agora, quase não chove mais. Antes, Chovia quase todos os dias. Agora quase não chove mais. O Francisco era um homem muito feliz. Hoje ele vive triste e deprimido. O Francisco era um homem muito feliz. Hoje ele vive triste e deprimido. And of course we live in the real world. In this case, not everybody wants to give explanations about everything. So, uh, in this case, you could hear some sentence like O Francisco era um homem muito feliz and that's it. You would have to imply that nowadays he's not that happy anymore. And that's what usually Brazilians do. They don't say the last part of the sentence. They don't explain a lot what they're doing or why, why they're saying this. They just say, Francisco era muito feliz. And then you have to imply, ah, but now he's not that happy anymore. Okay, so some takeaways. The simple past tense used for actions in a specific past. And when I say in a specific past, it's a specific moment in the past. For example, there is a specific time. Ontem às três horas da tarde eu comi bolo. Ontem às três horas da tarde eu comi bolo. And then, a specific day. Hmm, Terça-feira passada eu fui para o campo. 
terça-feira passada, eu fui para o campo. And then, duration is clear by context. And my uh, Microsoft Office here helps me to correct that to contexto. Hmm? That's the, a very simple word. But let's correct it. Because when we talk about the imperfect past tense, it can be used when you uh, are talking about routine in the past, when you're talking about the past and the present, comparing those two, we just saw that, and when you're talking about habits in the past, like I would do this in the morning and I would do that in the afternoon, blah, blah, blah. When you use would in Portuguese, in English, you would use the imperfect past tense. Not faria, daria, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Actually, you can do that, but it changes the meaning. And But wait, there's more. Of course, whenever I say, oh, you can use this and that and this and that, these are general guidelines. Language is alive. Portuguese is alive in many countries, many territories, many cities, many towns, and in many people. So everyone is going to come up with a different use of the same features we are talking about here. Your best bet is always listen to what people are saying and pay attention to how they're saying it. It's going to improve your Portuguese so, so much. And do you know what else will help you improve your Portuguese? Visiting www.portuguesewithli, oh, Eli, that's my name, .com. <laughs> I have so many resources for you. You can visit my website and see everything that I have prepared. And I even have some free stuff that you can grab right now and improve your Portuguese. Muito obrigado por assistir esse vídeo e até a próxima. Tchau, tchau.